an ABC News exclusive, an unprecedented look at a murder case that rocked a generation. Two Beverly Hills brothers, Eric and Lyle Menendez, convicted of killing their wealthy parents in a grisly double murder. It's been nearly three decades ago. It's a case that our Terry Moran has covered. You've covered this from the very start. I Terry. have, a long time yeah. ago. And you know, Robin, guys, it's a case that has haunted me. All these years since I covered it as a young reporter. Really? It's one of those that just grabbed a hold of me and never let go. The Menendez brothers' trial, at the time, it was called the crime of the century when it happened. And it had all the ingredients. Murder in Beverly Hills. A family shattered in the most horrifying way. And as the case unfolded, shocking accusations of what was really going on in that home. The victims, Jose Menendez, a Cuban immigrant to this country who'd made good becoming a corporate chieftain on both coasts and ultimately rising to become a Hollywood power broker. And his wife, Kitty, who seemed an all-American wife and mom. And they seemed to have it all. Their sons, Lyle, 21 at the time of the crime, and Eric, 18, good-looking, outgoing young guys, star tennis players. They had the brightest of futures ahead. But behind those closed doors, the Menendez family was a cauldron of lies and secrets. And on August 20th, 1989, in Beverly Hills, it all boiled over. Jose and Kitty Menendez brutally murdered. And then, shockingly, Lyle and Eric, their sons, arrested for the crime. And in this ABC News documentary, we gather so many of the voices of the participants. You'll hear them, including for the first time in 20 years, we hear from Lyle Menendez by phone from prison about that night. My name is Lyle Menendez. I've been in prison for 26 years. I am the kid that did kill his parents. And no river of tears has changed that. And no amount of regret has changed it. Beverly Hills is a quiet town. Even the business district kind of folds up at seven o'clock. We average two murders a year and really don't know what you're in for when you get a murder call. Uh, what's the problem? I'm trying to kill my parents. Uh, were they shot? Yes. <laughs> 12 shots in the middle of Beverly Hills on a Sunday night and no one calls the police. We're waiting at the house. No one shows up. And I, I still can't believe it. I'm sitting on the stairs afterwards thinking the police are going to be there in, in seconds. They've got roving patrol. In and people, areas. many, many people did hear the shots. Many neighbors came in and said they heard all these shots, but nobody called because they just figured this is Beverly Hills. This doesn't happen in Beverly Hills. So you call the police, but at that point, you had already decided. We were very stunned, and we felt that um, we would go to jail, obviously, and, and we, you know, it was a selfish reason to just not want to have to, to go through that. You know, by this intersection, I could actually see the police tape and the police cars in front of Nenda's house. As we walked in the front door, the only thing I could really detect is the silence. And then in the back of the foyer was this uh, library family room which is where the murder occurred. The television was on, so it was just a normal evening for them. Kitty was wearing white. She was covered in blood. Jose had a shotgun blast to the back of his head. It was uh, really horrendous. When Jose and Kitty were found dead, the police didn't do what they normally do in a case like that. There are things that could have been done that night that would have proven that they were the killers. The murder weapons were in their cars. Nobody bothered to look. At the time, we felt they were victims, and you're not going to press them because their parents just got blown away. I remember it was the morning after the murder. I pulled up to the house, and then all of a sudden, my car door slammed open and Eric jumped in and scared the hell out of me. And frantically said to me that they needed my husband's legal help. I said, Eric, what's going on here? Well, he says, uh, Mrs. Wright, my parents were murdered last night. And I said, what? He was not sad, not crying, no emotion whatsoever. Who would think of legal advice the, the day of your parents' murder? Unless you're guilty. 
But the real issue in this case, of course, wasn't who did it. The Menendez brothers quickly confessed after they were arrested. The question is, why did they kill their parents? And what they said about that in court, claims of a life of abuse, including sexual abuse at the hands of their father, that shocked the country, triggered a national debate. And one last thing, that interview with Barbara Walters back in 1995, that is the last time they saw each other. And if the if the penal system works, they will never see each other again. <laughs> what is it, like you said in the beginning, that this is something that has stayed with you all of these years, covering it? It, it was so emotional, if you remember. Their, yeah. their testimony about this, their, their claims that this family was actually a, a toxic uh, cauldron that they lived in all those years. And to be uh, in, in that room where they told the story of their lifetime of abuse, which many people didn't believe, some people did, mm -hmm. It was, it was haunting. It really was. And we're going to hear some things we haven't heard before. In this yes, indeed. Yes, right. indeed. It's, oh. it's good work. All right. Take care of that cold, Terry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Truth and Lies, the Menendez Brothers, airs tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern right here.